Here is useful information about every single League of Legends champion part two. Go check part one if you haven't already. And of course, if you could take a second to poke that sub button to help me get to 200k subs, I would be so grateful. All right, let's get into it. When playing Nasus, try to avoid fighting until hitting your major power spikes, like getting Sheen, hitting level six, and hitting around 80 to 100 stacks. Also, fun fact, Nasus has the highest win rate when a pike support is on the team with him. Nautilus has two hitbox indicators for his Q. The outside indicator is for champions, and the inside one is for terrain. Hooks will still land on champions with the side of the indicators, but if you try it on terrain, it'll completely miss. Because of this wider hitbox for champions, you can actually hook people over some small walls, which is kind of insane. A great way to mess with the other team as Nico is to use your W as someone else on your team and then immediately use your W again to change to someone else. It's almost guaranteed to throw the other team off. Yo, really quick guys, this video is sponsored by Porofessor, which is an overlay app that gives you an insane amount of information and you don't even need to tap out a league to use it. You can use Porofessor to do a bunch of cool things like scout the opponents before the game even starts and it will tell you some really useful info like who's on a losing streak and how good people really are on their champs. Not gonna lie, having to look up runes every time is a pain, but Porofessor automatically imports the best ones and you can even see pro builds as well. There's even an in-game Porofessor overlay which shows you live stats and allows you to see what areas you need to improve on, which is apparently everything. The best part is Porofessor is 100% free, so make sure to use my link in the description and get it today. All right, back to the video. These are the runes that most people take on Nidalee, but these are the secondary runes that have the highest win rate. When playing Nocturne, you can use your spell shield on monsters like dragons auto attacks to get even more attack speed. This can be super useful for when you're trying to take an objective in a pinch as quickly as possible. When going for an objective, always use your consume first and then smite second. Your Q has a small animation and your smite doesn't, so if you do it in this order, you can immediately deal an insane amount of damage almost in one frame. Yeah, so I'm gonna be honest, I may or may not have found Jack on tips for Olaf, so instead, here's a picture of a cat wearing a sunflower costume. Some Oriana players like to try and hide their cues in walls, but if you look closely, you can still see a circle below it, making it a lot easier to see if someone's trying to cheese you. One of the things new Orm players struggle with is getting the Q and E knockup timing down. But one way you can guarantee you always hit the knockup is by casting W right after Q and then E. If you go Q, W, E, you will always hit the knockup because your W ability animation has just the right amount of delay. When playing Pantheon, I guess a lot of people didn't know that you can recast your E early to cancel it doing some extra damage damage. If it's his fifth stack, he can also get some movement speed out of it, which is great for escapes. Poppy's buckler tends to mostly go to the left of her. I say mostly because sometimes it does go right, but 90% of the time it will be on the left side. Pike can actually cancel his W by just hitting recall, and that way he doesn't have to wait it out or use another ability to stop it. If you're trying to escape using Kiana's E, try to get as close as possible to the opponent before dashing because that way you'll get the most distance between them. You can also use Kiana's E on jungle camps to get over the walls just like Yasuo's E. You can use Gale Force to cancel your E jump on Quinn and get off damage faster, as well as get closer to them so they can't escape. This same concept also works with Prowler's Claw. Rakan has the highest win rate when an Aurelia mid is on the team with him. Did you know Ramus's ult does damage to objectives? It could potentially help with getting first turret or maybe even a backdoor hero play. A lot of people don't realize that you can actually see people and things without vision when you're in Rek'Sai's tunnel form. If you look closely, you can see a ripple from where they walk. This is of course the Scuttle Crab, but the same thing works with enemy champions. Whoever Rel hits gets a little buff that says break the mold, Rel has stolen armor and magic resist from this unit, and you can use this timer to tell exactly how long her passive will remain on you. Renata's Q will always cast from where she initially cast it, which means if you only have a window on a champion from a certain angle, but maybe need to dodge an ability coming in your direction, you could Q from that spot, flash over, and still hit your enemy while also getting out of the way. It's actually pretty helpful for fending off ganks. Renekton can cancel his alt animation by using W, R, and then E, which can actually save you a decent amount of time. Rengar can get off some really long dashes using flash if the targets are near bushes. Flashing right into a bush after jumping basically gives them another free jump. Wall hopping on Riven can be a little tricky. Typically, you need to line up your character to hop over. However, if there is a target on the other side, you just simply have to hover over that target and you'll make the jump. It makes it much easier to do. A lot of people see Rumble's overheating as the worst case scenario, but a lot of people also forget that overheating actually gives some extra attack speed, extra magic damage, as well as percent health damage. So if you overheat as Rumble, just start beating the crap out of them. When playing Rise, you can hide your ultimate in walls so that they can't see it, but you can still make it over the walls for a quick surprise. Having a rise randomly pop up in your lane can definitely cause some confusion. One of Samir's hidden combos is EQ and then flash. You can EQ onto one target and then flash onto another to bring that damage onto the second target as well. Sejuani can Q and alt together to help hide the alt animation. Additionally, she can also add flash into the mix to get in another surprise knockup. You can flash after Senna's alt has been cast and it won't change the area it hits. The alt will always remain where it was initially cast even if you flash in the opposite direction. If you have at least nine notes on Seraphine, you can hit the turret without being in 
turret range. And the more notes you have, the longer range you can go, and obviously more damage as well. Using sets ultimate against the wall will help the damage come off much quicker, which can be great if you're trying to get some damage off as soon as possible. You can actually tell which Shaco is real and which is the clone by clicking on them and seeing which one has the gold border around their mythic item. The real one has the gold border and the fake does not. You can get six empowered autos in a row if you hit Q and then just wait. Your empowered autos last just as long as your Q cooldown, so right after you use your three autos from your last Q, you'll have a new one up and ready to go. Giovanna has the highest win rate with an ember knife and a refillable along with a sweeper. You can of course ward and then get a sweeper before the minion spawn as well, but starting off with the sweeper is a smart choice. When playing Singed, you can fling people over walls, so the next time your team is trying to take an objective, try flinging their jungler over the wall right before they're supposed to smite. It's entirely possible to steal red or blue at level 1 by yourself, and it's actually pretty risk-free. All you have to do is start at the chicken since they'll kill you the fastest and then use your passive to kill the red buff. And after you die, you'll even keep the red buff when you go back to lane. Pretty hype. At level 3 on Sivir, it's usually better just to level up Q again instead of leveling W because W is pretty useless in the early game. When using Skarner's ultimate, make sure to turn around at the very last second so you can put yourself between them and their escape route. It also gets them closer to your team. Most people take Exhaust or Ignite on Sona, but she actually has the highest win rate with heal. When playing Soraka, use the icons right above the minimap to help keep track of who is low and who needs an ult. You can also use F keys to confirm you actually need to use your ult or not. You can use Zonia's while in Swain's ultimate and it will continue to do damage, just like the old Swain. You can actually use Silas's W to get over some small walls like the back of the dragon pit. If you really need to land a stun on Syndra, try throwing out a W as well as a Q and you'll have a lot better chance that you'll hit your target. You might not have as much follow-up damage after, but it might not be necessary if you're doing something like trying to escape. After you Q stun your target, you can instantly W for a CC chain that's almost impossible to dodge. The W has to be cast immediately after to make sure they can't escape, but it's pretty easy to pull off and it's very annoying to deal with. Did you know you can use Talia's W to throw someone into your wall that you just threw down and get them stuck? Ignore this step if you're a step bro. Most people know that if you ult on Talon, you have to hit someone to direct your blades if you want to do that extra damage. Otherwise, they'll just come back to you. However, sometimes it's not the best idea to dive back in, especially if you have no HP. What you can do though is start your Q animation and then flash out of the jump and that will be enough to direct your blades from your ult to your target. Unlike when you face all-in champions like J4, it's really hard to time your ult versus ranged teams because you don't know when they're going to commit. And it's also very easy for them to disengage. So instead, if you're trying to use your ult against them, try engaging onto them yourself so you can control the fight. Did you know that you can QSS a Teemo blind? This can actually be crucial for some specific matchups. When you hook a champion on Thresh, you have to wait a second until you can cast Q again to move towards your target. However, when it comes to jungle camps, you can instantly jump as soon as they're hit. So make sure not to hesitate, especially if you're trying to make a great escape. Did you know once you hit level 15 on Tristana and if you have rapid fire cannon, which you should by level 15, then you can actually hit Baron from over the wall. Your attack range from your passive and rapid fire cannon are just far enough, which makes it super easy to help your team take Baron. Trundle's pillar can actually knock enemies over some thin walls, but it's a very fine line and can be somewhat inconsistent. Trindamir's W can be used to detect enemies nearby if they're invisible or in bushes. As long as the ability lights up, you know someone is nearby. Also, a lot of people don't know that the W won't work if they're facing towards you. So if you're running away from a Trindamir and you time it right and face towards them, you can actually dodge his W. Additionally, Trindamir's W also reduces attack damage, which means you can actually get people to negative AD in the early game. After you hit R2 on Twisted Fate, you can actually still stop yourself from teleporting with Zonias if you realize that you may have bit off a bit more than you can chew. It could potentially save you from looking really stupid, but probably not. Did you know that Twitch can go invisible with his Q and then use teleport, and when you arrive, you'll still be invisible to the other team? A lot of people don't know that Udyr's E can actually ghost you from collisions for a few seconds, which also means try and save it for when you have to run through big waves before a gank or if you need to use it as a tool for escaping. Don't forget to utilize Urgot's fear on his ultimate that a lot of people seem to forget about. Flashing in right before you drag someone in can be a great way to engage a team fight. Did you know you can use R and Q at the same time on Varus? Additionally, if you have Gale Force, you can also use that right after for some pretty decent burst damage. Vayne's Tumble is an essential part of her kit, but it can take a second sometimes to get off the next auto attack. However, if you're next to a wall, you can tumble into that wall to get a much quicker attack off. This is great for getting that fast DPS off. Whenever you have time to cast your ultimate on Vigar, try throwing a W or Q right after. It takes almost no extra time and is just free damage. Always try and combo your ult on Vel'Koz with a Q because it helps get stacks quicker. Additionally, you can also overshoot your Q in case they flash away from your ult. This is pretty situational, but if you have Baron buff and have a maxed out ult, you have just enough time to ult someone back and still hit your second R to dash. After you use your ultimate on Vi, you can flash into people nearby to knock them up on your way to your target. This is a great way to hit as many people as possible in a team fight. Whenever you're recalling as Viego, always throw down your E so you can back in your camouflage. That way, if the enemy finds you, they won't even know exactly where you are. It's basically a free recall. When facing a champion that dives on top of you like Aurelia, just drop a W on top of yourself. That way, if they ever want to keep attacking you, they have to get stunned as well. You can also combo this with 
with your ult if they stay and get a lot of damage off, especially if they get stunned. Vladimir's passive bar is probably one of the most important damage sources for him, so it's important to be able to use the crit when needed. For that, you can actually hold the red bar for a bit longer by using abilities like E or even W. Using these abilities will freeze the red bar, giving just a bit longer to cast the Q. This is a great way for trading in lane because right as your opponent thinks that the red bar is about to expire, you hold onto it just a bit longer and then you can get the crit off. Unlike some disabling abilities, Volibear's ultimate doesn't reset who it attacks after it's been disabled, which means whoever the target started hitting initially is still the target once Volibear's ultimate wears off. If you're not sure who is targeted, you can always tell by the gray line the turret is pointing to. So just be ready to keep taking damage as soon as the turret comes back online if you're originally tanking. Did you know if you cast Warwick's Fear before ulting someone, it will always go off right when the ultimate hits, which means try to make sure to at least E before going in, especially if there are other enemies nearby to target if you're trying to ult. That way, everyone around you will be feared and it'll be more difficult to deal with you. You also may take this knowledge and consider holding onto your E to spread out your CC in some situations. I seriously don't see people do this enough as Wukong, so I'm just gonna say it. If you're trying to run away from someone instead of running, sometimes the best thing to do is literally nothing. If you just stand still after running for a second, I almost guarantee that they're gonna think you W'd and they'll keep chasing forward where they think you went. When in reality, you did nothing, so after they walk past you, you can just walk away or actually W away. If you ever find yourself with Hextech gates on the map as Zaya, try using them to your advantage by setting up your feathers and taking the portal and then recalling the feathers. It can create some very unexpected damage. When playing Xerath, always try to W before you E so you slow them, making it easier to hit your stun. You can even combo it with Q and even your ult if you want some extra damage. Did you know you don't actually have to target your E directly on Shin Zhao? If you target next to a unit, it will find the closest enemy within 200 units. This can be really helpful when it's difficult to click on them because there's a lot of minions. If you ever want to make it really hard to tell where you're about to throw your Q on Yasuo, you can always use your wind wall first in the opposite direction and then throw your Q. This will allow you to cancel your Q animation and throw your Q backwards. A surprising amount of people don't know that you can break crowd control with Yone's E. You have to get the timing right, but if you recast it, you should be good to go. Summoning your ghouls and then hitting your opponent with your E is one of the main damage sources on Yorick. But if you E someone first, your ghouls will automatically rise and attack that marked target. In other words, you don't always have to make sure your minions are up and then try and hit your E. But instead, you can focus on landing your E first as long as you have graves ready. Did you know you can actually go over some small walls when detaching as Yumi? Just make sure the champion is close enough to a wall and you should be able to hop over. This can be really helpful if you need to escape or if you need to ward Baron Pit really quick and don't want to go all the way around. I thought everyone knew this, but I guess a lot of people don't know that you can teleport to Zack's blob to prevent him from dying. It'll make the blob you TP to unkillable, guaranteeing Zack's revival, but no promises after he revives. You can jump over some seriously thick walls using Zez W if you click in the right spot, like this one for instance. You can actually use the alcove to escape with Zeri's E, which can come in super clutch in a tight situation. All you have to do is hug the wall here and then click on this blue patch and you'll be good to go. No more getting ganked. You can also get over some surprisingly thick walls using Zig's W. Sometimes it can be tricky to line it up correctly, but with a little bit of practice, it can actually get pretty easy. If you get enough ability haste on Zillion, which is very possible in the late game, you can easily double stun someone by Q, Wing, and then waiting for the last Q, and then you can essentially always have a bomb on them since the cooldown is so low. Late game Zillion is just a little bit annoying. A lot of people Q and then flash and then Q to get the max range possible on Zoe, but what you should be doing is hitting Q, hitting Q again, and then hitting flash at the very last second. Your star will travel the extra distance and it will give your opponent far less time to react to what's happening. And lastly, when playing Zyra, it's typically smart to still throw plants down when trying to siege a turret because while the plant can't actually do any damage to the turret, it can still tank a turret shot leaving you with more minions that can, as well as extra time. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to send any tips you got to outsidejokelol at gmail.com to potentially be in a future video and please try to avoid using the league recorder because the quality sucks. Thank you so much to my tier 3 patrons, Stefan, Knockheck, and James, and thank you so freaking much to my other patrons as well. Bye!